grow mm -hmm. on a daily basis. It doesn't just remain stagnant. Mm. That's a good answer. In all honesty, that's a good answer. Because cool. I... I mean, like, I don't like to risk offending people, like, especially in church on like, and be like, well, what do you think? Do you think I'm saved? And I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, like, what are you doing with your life? And like, I usually tell people, you know, if you're, if your main priority is the pursuit of comfort, then I would argue that you're honestly wasting your life. Like in a sense where if you think the most important thing after high school, especially if you went to Cal, is for one, graduating, and then going to college, getting a degree, then getting a job in that degree, paying off your student loans, getting a house, getting a car, having a family, and then going to church every Sunday, and that's the extent of it, and your, your main mission is to secure yourself financially. I would argue that you're wasting your life. And God's kind of a, a means to an end in that picture. To, exactly. Yeah. And and, and it, I tell people, I'm like, at that point, I would I would have some questions and conversations with yourself about whether or not you, you are indeed saved. And I, and I tell people, like, you know, I'm not saying that you're not meant for a house mm -hmm. and a car. I'm saying that you're not meant to actively search for that over the the plan that has been given to you you know yeah. and i know it's hard to find that plan but like that's that's what all this is for you know well, well one of the early on in my christian faith one of the events that shaped my wife my life um, mm -hmm. in a major way was I went to, to Passion. Have you been to Passion before? Everybody except for me has well, been to Passion. You're not a Christian, man, if you've not been to Passion. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so I, I went to Passion. I've been a few times, but I went the first time my senior year of high school, so in 2011. Mm -hmm. And John Piper, a guy who started to and is still very influential in my life, he mm -hmm. spoke and he gave a sermon and there were a lot of points like most John Piper sermons, but yep. the main point of his sermon is he was asking the question, what is at the bottom of your joy? And the specific question he asked says, do you, do you feel more loved by God when he makes much of you? Or do you feel more loved by God when he enables you to make much of him? And so what he's pointing out there is depending on how you answer that question now, both are true, right? but there's a ranking. One of those is at the bottom. And so he would go through all these examples and mm -hmm. basically ask the question, why, like, why do you want this? And so kind of the example you were pointing out about comfort or getting mm -hmm. a car or a nice house or a nice career or whatever, it's fine to want those things. But if those things are what's at the bottom of your joy, what ultimately is satisfying you, mm -hmm. then that is that's not a good spot to be in mm -hmm. and he kind of made the point you know talking about are you saved or are you not saved what happens at the beginning of salvation and it's a journey is a new birth right right and he says that the new birth like what happens is all people just naturally we are at the bottom of our joy right? naturally we are not seeking god as our ultimate satisfaction mm -hmm. we are at the bottom of our joy but at the new birth, that's flipped. That's kind of turned on its head that we now seek out God mm -hmm. as our ultimate joy above all of these other things. So, What do you think it's going to have to take for your students and or at least for the American evangelistic culture to kind of catch on to that more? Do you think because, I mean, you're obviously passionate about it and it's it's at the center of your life and how you're conducting yourself do people need to get kicked out of Cal? Do people need to, you know, suffer like that for a period of time to get a wake up call? Or do you think, you know, this can be achieved in the classroom? Um, I think when you go through traumatic experiences, you go through trials, that can definitely be one way that the God works through that to wake people up. I mean, it certainly has worked and continues to work that way mm -hmm. in my life, but different people learn different ways. I think it is possible to do that in the classroom. Um, but do I think there's going to be a large number of kids who are born again or kind of get that concept just from sitting in a Bible class 
I don't think so. But that's where yeah. you also have the the really important relational aspect of, of teaching at Cal or right. ministering at a church that you form relationships with people. Hmm. Um, most of the the most rewarding experiences I have as a teacher is not necessarily in a classroom setting, but when I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a student outside of the classroom, that's, that's typically where I, I see things start to click and it's because mm -hmm. I have that relationship. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's hard to, you know, put together a formula to make any of this stuff happen, but yeah. we try to do the best we can. I feel that. Um, I wanted to 